All right. So that's one way ANOVA. Um, most of these ideas can be extended in more complicated ANOVA situations, but sometimes they're not as easy to compute by hand. So we're also going to talk about two way ANOVA, um, which is basically linear regression with two categorical predictors. But uh, the reason why people get so into ANOVA is because it has uh, these nice interactions with experimental design. So if you do a very careful experimental design, you can use ANOVA to get a lot of power in your experiments. Um, and so you often only need to have one observation for each combination of levels and sometimes even less than that. So it can really make it uh, cheaper when you're running experiments. So this is an example which has to do with um, self-tanning lotion. And there's, uh, there's two brands, I guess, um, or chemicals uh, that are in self-tanning lotion. I'm not gonna try and pronounce these, but there's the E1 and there's the D1. And then there's three different ways that you could apply self-tanner. You could use it as a solution, a gel, or a cream. And so if we're thinking about data from this experiment, there's kind of two ways to think about it. There's the tall format. And so this one, you're gonna see the E uh, brand represented three times and then the D one, you're gonna see the solution appear a couple times, the gel appear a couple times, the cream appear a couple times. So this data set is gonna be kind of tall. But there's another way to think of the data as a wide format, which is where your rows are one of the variables and your columns are another. And then all of the values are sort of in this very compact little rectangle. So R wants the data in this tall format in order to be able to do like A, O, V, and we're gonna try and predict D score, which is something about how tan someone gets, I guess, uh, by brand plus formula. Um, my data, I think it's called suntan. So in order to be able to do that kind of analysis in R, I need a column for formula, I need a column for D-score, I need a column for brand. Uh, but if you are a person and you're trying to think about doing the ANOVA table by hand, it's usually easier to think about it when you look at this wide format. So uh, the book will present both of these formats a lot of times. And when we do two-way ANOVA, we have more notation. So now we've got our uh, mu, which is the grand mean. But then we've also got tau sub i, which is the block effect. And we've got beta sub j, which is the treatment effect. And essentially, um, the block and the treatment, those are just two of our variables from our two-way ANOVA. Sometimes, um, like, uh, you're doing something with farming. A lot of ANOVA came from trying to come up with better crops. And so you might have a block of, uh, of land that you're using, and then you're going to put different treatments on, on the land. Um, in terms of this example with the suntan lotion, I don't think it really matters which one you think of as your block and which you think of as your treatment treatment. But this just gives a way to break down uh, those numbers yet again. And again, this is basically just going to be means, but it gets more complicated with two variables. So I've done a bunch of summary statistics here. So I've taken uh, my suntan data set, I've grouped by brand, and I found the means in that response variable for each of the two groups. And then I did the same thing for formula. So I got the means for each of the three different ways that it could be applied. And then I didn't use a group by at all. And I just got the overall mean of that D score uh, variable. So if we wanted to, let's say we've got our tau sub E chemical and our tau sub D chemical. The way that we would do this is we would figure out, okay, uh, 10.7 minus uh, 18.4. I think that comes out to be negative 7.7. And again, 26.1 minus 18.4. And that one's positive 7.7. .7. That's just a coincidence. Um, and I could find my beta sub solution. And I guess I should have hats on these guys beta hat sub solution, that's going to be the 22.9 minus 18.4, 
which I think is 4.5. And I could do beta sub gel, which would be 15.4 minus 18.4. So that should be uh, negative 3. And beta sub cream, uh, which is going to be 16.8 minus 18.4, negative 1.6. So then I've got all my taus, I've got all my betas, and if I wanted to find a predicted value, y hat, for uh, the first observation in my data set, let's go back. So this was um, in that E brand and solution. Uh, so I wanna try and make a prediction for that, uh, that row. So then I would have my grand mean, 18.4, uh, plus my tau for um, for the E chemical, negative 7.7, plus the beta for the solution, which is 4.5. And I think I did that math. I was sort of doing that in R down here, and it should be 15.2. So my Y hat uh, for E S is 15.2. Uh, so let's just look at the model.tables. So if I had run this in R, D score tilde brand plus formula, data equals suntan, and looked at the model.tables of that uh, model, I would get the effects for the brand. So that was the negative 7.7 and positive 7.7. And then I've got my effects for the formulas. Uh, 4.5, what did I have here? Oh, I just had negative 3 and negative uh, 1.6. So uh, a little bit of rounding in terms of the, um, the means that I was getting from R versus the more complete numbers from the model.tables, but those are the effects. So um, we actually went and found all those effects by hand using those summary statistics on the previous slide. So that's another thing that I could ask you to do. Tell me all of the brands, like fill in the model.tables.